the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth on computer security. Find out what it's all about. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Holiday Inn West on the waterway, right next door to the newly opened Hard Rock Park. We're focused on the Computer Security Conference that was held here at the end of last week, and we're visiting with one of its featured speakers, Cully Carson, attorney at Womble, Carlisle, Sandridge, and Rice. Good morning, Ray. Cully. Good morning. Thanks so Thanks. much for coming in to kick off the week and to highlight y'all's very successful conference just held here, the second annual Computer Security Conference 2008, just last week. That's right. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's certainly, it was a pleasure last year, and it's great to be here again. Yes, this is your now third time on the show, but second time on this topic. Of course, you were with us last year here with uh, when John Stamey, Dr. Stamey, who's the general chair of the conference, was with us, and John Kibler. He'll actually be with us tomorrow. We're real excited about it. Of course, later, later, latter part of last year, you were with us at Puckett Sheets and Hogan. That's right. And we were focused on some of the uh, lead building standards in, um, in both the Carolinas and throughout the country, which is another thing you've got your hands in, Kelly. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I have a bit of a diverse background, so I you know, pull from a lot of different areas in terms of um, you know, my interests, and, then, right. and so my practice is similarly varied. So which is great. I enjoy being able to have a lot of uh, different areas to really kind of uh, to look into. And your office of the firm is located in one of the tech capitals of the world, the Research Triangle Park, right there in the heart of the Triangle, the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area of North Carolina. Pretty exciting place to be located, focused on uh, computer security and, and data uh, protection and privacy protection. A uh, lot going on in that area of the world. Absolutely. No. We, uh, the Research Triangle Park is, you know, one of the really cutting edge areas of the country. Right. You look at Silicon Valley. You look at really Research Triangle Park. Oh, yeah. Right up there in terms of the numbers of, um, you know, Fortune 500 companies that you have right there in the Triangle. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. Amazing. And their staffing levels in the Triangle. It's not like IBM just has a couple hundred folks there. I mean, they're a Fortune 500 That's company right. or even Fortune 1 or 200. Uh, Cisco and others, these very, Nortel formerly, but these very large presence, IBM with right. more than 10,000 folks there. I mean, it uh, just keeps adding up. It's That's incredible. right. That's right. You know, it is it is amazing. SAS, of course, is there as right. well. Right. Uh, you know, so they've just got uh, just uh, probably one of the major employers in that area is, you know, techno all technology-based, computer-based right. um, businesses. So it's a great place to be as a, as a law firm that um, you know, as one of our focuses is technology law and sure. um, computer, you know, computer law as well. Womble Carlisle Sandridge and Rice. Uh, a lot of folks know it as Womble Carlisle, or probably even Womble. I think WCSR.com, a great website. I think recently they were recognized on the technology side for their own website. That's right. For two years running now, they've had the best uh, website in North Carolina and South Carolina. So for, right? in the large law firm category, we've got right. 500 lawyers from Atlanta to uh, to Delaware. So wow. um, so we certainly have a, a large presence, uh, but our our internet presence is is being is lauded as one of the best. So that is tremendous in the large law firm category. But even across the board, large, small, otherwise, it's a tremendous website. Oh, a yeah. lot of great information on there. We even I even checked it out last year, not long after your interview. To, uh, to, to see the site and saw a heck of a lot of information for normal folks that would go yeah. and visit, not just for clients, but stuff of interest, uh, white papers, for instance, right. stuff of interest for folks uh, all over the world. Yeah, no, it's, and that's really one of the, the things that uh, distinguished our site from others was right. we've, we've got podcasts, we've got um, you know, the white papers you mentioned, right. um, and then just being very sort of user-friendly, I think, as well. Um, so it's, it's really... Um, as well as blogs, where there's got a number of sure. blogs on the on the site as well that I participate in, and and others, you know, other attorneys right. throughout the firm, which gives people current, up to date sure. information on specific topics. So. Absolutely. How long have you been at Womble Carlisle, Kelly, and what prompted you to join the firm? Did you have any ties to the Triangle? 
Uh, I've been with a firm now for about two years, oh, right. two years in June. Okay. Um, but I'm actually from the Triangle originally, grew up in Durham yeah. uh, you know, originally, and then uh, um, went to UNC Chapel Hill right. um, for, for undergraduate, and then took some time and went to, to Washington, D.C. for five years. Oh, wow, that, that time, was exciting. Uh, yeah. It was, working on Capitol Hill there for a couple of years, right. uh, which was fantastic. And then um, uh, over in law school, went to law school at Catholic University in Washington as well. Great. Um, then met my wife Sarah. Oh yeah. Uh, in wow. law school. Oh, and she's a, she's an attorney also. She is Actually, an attorney. I know well. that. For, for you, but for viewers who've never seen you, I want to make sure they have a chance to really get to know you. Your wife's an attorney also. That's right. She is an attorney, and um, right now she's uh, with our boys at home. But she is also um, and also in the process of getting her license in North Carolina. Good. Uh, basically, you know, we've only been here now for two years, so it takes right. some time to get that process completed. Right. So she's doing that and then um, you know, doing some writing herself on, the, on as well. Writing? Really? Yeah. What kind of writing, Cully? She's doing... Legal writing? Well, she's actually doing a lot of uh, um, kind of journalism kind of writing. You know, Is so she, that right? She has like a, our a show blog. sponsor, the Myrtle right. Beach Herald. That's We're right. always looking for good writers. Yeah. Well, maybe sign her up. <laughs> she's, uh, she's actually just was, uh, published a piece in, in the uh, Raleigh News and Observer. Tremendous. There in uh, in North Carolina, so wow. uh, great piece. She had to submit a no, you know a writing sample and a number of uh, a number of a applicants, and she was selected. So right, she'll continue to do that, and uh, so she's and she's also doing her own website and writing and kind of freelance yeah. writing is where she's is that right? Like to, how, like to head. So how exciting! I bet a lot of attorneys could could think about making that move into writing because they write all the time. I guess you spend a lot of your day either typing or writing things out uh, on behalf of clients, but as you said, just to stay on top of things on a regular basis. That's right. Well, law, law school in general teaches you um, really how to think uh, critically, right. um, and that you can really apply that skill set in anything that you do. Sure. Um, so even if you don't necessarily practice law, having that background really gives you um, the ability to hurt what she's doing is kind of sort of doing some, you know, uh, product reviews, right. so that gives her the ability to sort of really critically think about the product, and mm -hmm. you can, as I said, you can apply it across really anything that you do. So Absolutely. it's a great, great uh, skill set to have. You said she's at home with the boys. That she means is. you've got more than one, and I assume you're talking about your sons, That's not your right. dogs. Yeah. No, we've got two boys. Yeah. Two boys, uh, Cully and Will. Right. Um, so there, Cully is six, and Will is two. Wow. Now and and amazing, they're just you know growing. Uh, growing as fast as, as uh, we can't believe it, but they yeah. are. It's amazing. Cully's now in kindergarten, and Will is, uh, you know, keeping Sarah, uh, keeping her hands full. How exciting, Cully! What's the best part about being a dad? Is that I um, mean, you know, it must be wild going from that just transitioning into yeah. a fatherhood to having a six-year-old and a two-year-old. A two-year-old, yeah, absolutely. Well, it keeps you really grounded. I think is the right. bottom line. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when you come home and uh, you've had a hard day, and you've had clients, and you've had you know, opposing counsel sort of hammering on you to walk in the door and open that door and see those, uh, those you know, two faces is, uh, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. Well, of course, our real focus, not to segue off of your boys and yeah. your beautiful bride, but the Computer Security Conference, which was so successful here. Oftentimes when you get to that second annual, now they've already set the dates for back here mm -hmm. in March of 2009 for the third annual Computer Security Conference. Some tremendous big names in the computer security industry worldwide here in town at the Holiday Inn West last week. I saw that aside from John Kibler will be with us tomorrow, the uh, one of the founders of Ethical Hacking. And mm -hmm. I know Kibler is also an e a certified ethical hacker, but one of the founders of Ethical hack Hacking, one of the chief officers there at mm -hmm. uh, SecureWorks, one of the biggest computer security com companies in the world. I mean, you all had some tremendous folks here, Colin. Yeah, it was a tremendous conference, uh, great speakers. Uh, of course, this area is just you know evolving every day, right. and these folks are on the cutting edge of what's going on out there. Uh, you know, there's, you know, the security conference, is, you know, focuses on uh, a number of different sort of threats threats to personal, you know, consumers, people like you and me every day right. face these threats, uh, but then also on the national, you know, level, our national security is being threatened every single day by, wow. uh, you know, hackers mm -hmm. from other countries. So it's, it's a really, um, it's an ever um, evolving and emerging threat, both 
uh, mm -hmm. for citizens as well as for our nation as a whole. So it's really an important topic and uh, this conference really has some of the best. Privacy and data protection issues really are a big deal. How, why should the viewers, or how, how does this affect our viewers? Why should they really care about it and what can they do to monitor it? Yeah, well they should care about it because it, it, if it hasn't already affected them it probably will. Mm -hmm. and, and the ways that it'll affect them most likely is, you know, uh, is uh, data theft. You know, people uh, can either take your or get access to your social security number or any number of your personal sort of identifying information, your right. address, something like that, uh, and then, you know, create their own identity using your information. And the right. next thing you'll know, uh, you'll, you'll find out that somebody's, you know, opened up credit cards in your name, and they've right. done a number of other things to, uh, you know, you know, use your identity in a fraudulent way. Mm -hmm. The other, really, the biggest uh, threat, at least in 2007, was um, uh, was credit card fraud, and that's just right. a, a, an area that people just are using their cards more and more. So they need to be very, very careful with, um, you know, where they use them, how they use them, uh -huh. and uh, you know how they send that those that information because it can, it can be and is on a daily basis um, stolen. So is the careful factor online or is it when you go in and at, a, at a gas station and you're putting your credit card in? Is it when I'm on the phone with a florist ordering flowers and giving my credit card information or is it more just what I'm buying online? It's everything. It's wow. everything. Really, yeah. and in fact, the online surprisingly is not as, while it's certainly a big part of um, you know, identity theft mm -hmm. and, all, and fraud. Um, really, uh, you know, you can have a. They have these things that are called skimmers, that they have, which are basically a box that these um, thieves will put on top of a uh, machine, a credit card machine. Right. That so when you swipe your credit card through, right, that box collects your credit card information. They can then come back, take the box off. And it looks as if, um, you know, it looks like the same thing that you would normally be used to seeing right. when you put your credit card in there. That's so terrible. it's amazing. They're doing that on ATM machines. Right. Uh, Redbox, I don't know if you have Redbox here, but it's a McDonald's company. And they basically, in, in a lot of the grocery stores in our area, they have them their, their video rental, uh, mm -hmm. you know, machines. And so you put your credit card, swipe your credit card through there, and you can, you know, rent a video. And it, kind of spits the video out, mm. but uh, what these thieves are doing is they're putting these devices on top of the credit card, um, you know, swiping um, box right. and uh, capturing your information and then they take it, download it, and then they use it to, you know, uh, buy things and, uh, you know, commit fraud. So Wow. Yeah. Are credit cards as dangerous as debit cards or are they both equally uh, of issue? You know, obviously if you're and your debit card and you're plugging right. in your PIN number. I yeah. mean, I can see how that would be, but uh, credit cards, I just can't even fathom that. Yeah, well, it is, it's uh, it is. I mean, there are some credit cards, you know, there are some protection built right. in, sure. legal protection. Um, American Express, others, you know, will have some limits on the amount that you'll be exposed to, but yeah. at the same time, you know, it can be, at the end of the day, a big headache, if nothing else. Mm. Um, mm. But, you, you know, you can have some personal liability there depending upon the circumstances so you need to be people need to be very careful with the way that they uh, use their, their credit card uh, information obviously you're highlighting consumer issues what are some of the things that Womble Carlisle Sandridge and Rice are doing to protect clients on the data protection side or privacy issues what are some of the things you all do and of course you have a very extensive I was fascinated seeing the litany of attorneys that really focus on uh, data protection and privacy issues within your firm. It was left side, right side, I mean you've got uh, 20 or uh, two dozen at least there. Right. Well we have our, our privacy and data protection team is a really a multidisciplinary team that, that looks at privacy from a number of um, you know uh, sectors and vantage points. We have a, a team that really focuses on uh, finan the financial sector. Right. Uh, we've got t folks that uh, focus on health care um, and then others that focus on some of these uh, more broad, uh, you know, security issues. Right, so, sure. Um, we really have a, a, a really comprehensive team, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, we look at, um, you know, really all all of the the threats that are out there. So right, right. The types of work that we would do would be 
a lot of times representing companies, large companies. Right. Uh, recently in the news, the TJ Maxx, TJX companies oh. was really the uh, news of 2007. Right. They had a massive data breach and fraud that resulted in um, uh, over $150 million in, uh, in expenses for the company. No. So they. $150 uh, million. million. Wow. And that's just in the settlement costs. I'm sure when you put the attorney's fees on top of that mm -hmm. and other sort of tangential costs, right. it's got to be close to $200 million. So, wow. Um, you know, lots and lots of dollars at stake here, especially for these big companies that use mm -hmm. a lot of credit cards in that case. People had right. access to credit cards. A lot of um, cases out there where an employee might take a laptop home right. then the laptop gets stolen. That mm -hmm. same that happened actually to a, a Veterans Administration employee had their laptop stolen, had every uh, you know information for every veteran from about 1940 something you know to date oh, on this on. laptop. Yeah. Oh come on. It's a it happened, and they. I think they fortunately recovered the laptop, but uh, but those are big examples of um, the threats out there. And they're not all. In this case, you know, the, the employee certainly, I'm sure, right. brought the laptop home to, you know, to work on He's or something. On, sure. Um, so certainly nothing uh, really malicious. Uh, malicious intent mm -hmm. there. But you know, people are out there. If there's these are crimes of opportunity. So sure. uh, if somebody sees a laptop, they're going to try to get whatever information they can off of there. Terrible, Kelly. You know, one of the great things I saw about your firm is whether you're representing small clients or really big clients, your data protection team is highlighting the different aspects that how they would counsel the chief executive officer, the chief uh, hiring officer within and on small companies, how they would how you would counsel the entire small group there to to really be careful on a multitude of levels and the different aspects of things they really need to be careful about yeah well and that and that's right and that's and that's really we are you know uh, you know our former slogan said our lawyers mean business right and what that meant was basically we are there to help businesses in all shapes from startup companies to right. fortune 500 companies oh, so yeah. you know everybody has a different need and we sure. try to fit fit those needs um, you know one of the um, you know, for the smaller companies, especially here in South Carolina, for instance, the governor, as you, uh, we spoke about earlier, yes. has just signed into law a new data uh, protection uh, bill right. here in South Carolina, and South Carolina being now the 42nd state in, right? in the country to have a, a no notification law. Which, what is a notification yeah, law? That's basically that? um, a law that requires businesses. To if, if somebody if they do discover that somebody's hacked into their system for example right. through their internet or otherwise uh, that they have to notify their customers that there has been a breach of security and that they may want to you know take precautions on their end whether that's canceling credit cards or mm -hmm. you know um, just otherwise kind of being aware that there could be um, you know there could be fraud on, on their accounts so mm -hmm. um, so these laws are you know uh, there's really across the country there in these 42 states everybody's sort of doing it a little bit differently right, right now right uh, but uh, South Carolina did as I said just just join the fold and uh, sign important. that law in uh, here just in April, on April 2nd so you know we highlight you you brought a number of consumer issues up and obviously you've highlighted some of the aspects that your firm does in representing your clients but going back for our viewers on the consumer side just as you talked about the red box or you talked about the scanners the skimmers there mm -hmm. what can our viewers do i assume in, last week when you were here in town for the conference when you checked into the hotel you probably gave them a credit card you may have paid in cash i don't know but i assume a lot of credit cards are being utilized that red, red box issue sounds mm -hmm. like something that's populating and are, are popping up in places that we would consider very casual about or very uh, that we wouldn't be worried about. You mentioned right. ATM machines. What should our viewers do? What can they do? Should they not use credit cards? No, by all means, they should use credit cards. I mean, that's that's really the lifeblood of our economy. Right. Um, but at the same time, they just need to be very careful and use reasonable precautions. Right. Um, you know, sending your email, your uh, your credit card information over an unprotected email, for example, unsecured and unencrypted email is probably not a good idea. Right. Uh, there's many organizations out there where that when you're doing an online transaction, that it it'll tell you and that uh, you know that transaction is secure. So you just need right. to make sure that the sites that you're using on the internet sure. are secure sites. So 
Um, there, as I said, there are a number of companies, and you can, you can, uh, most companies now have what their privacy policies policies are right. on their internet sites. You might just review those just briefly. You don't have mm -hmm. to be a lawyer and, and review them in detail, but just to make sure that they do have a policy and that they're telling you that, that your credit card information will be protected. Right. And then also how it's going to be used, because the, another thing that is uh, consumers need to be aware of is that a lot of people will they'll give their credit card to to a business, sure. and that business will take that information. They may not give the, the, the specific the credit card numbers or any of the identifying information, but they'll give some of the characteristics of that consumer, right. and they'll put the, that information into a big pool with mm. all their other customers, and then they'll sell that information to is, a third party. Is that because right? There, that's right, because there's a number of there's a number of groups out there who. Um, you know their business model is based on selling information, be dem either, you know, demographic information, so that right. they can uh, then help people market and help people find consumers in a particular you know product line or what have you. But sure. that's how they get a, that information a lot of wow. the time. So wow, Tell people seem to be careful. It's the bottom line, and, and just um, I think people for the most part are careful right. uh, here in South Carolina. The the FTC had a report. That came out in February that basically said that um, I think it was about 8,000 um, uh, reported events right. to the FTC just, for, in, South just in South Carolina. Really? Which, which just to give you a little bit of you know perspective, South Carolina is you know between 30 and 40 uh, in the country right. in terms of um, you know. Number of data protection, you know, incidents reported. Really? So they're not not on the top, but they're right. certainly you know in the middle middle of the country in in that respect. So and are the are the top states the states with the most populations, or is it are some of the smaller population states uh, more prone to fraud or more prone to the uh, data protection problems? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, surprisingly, um, you know. Well, not surprisingly, California and some of the larger right. states are the right ones the that you would expect. Yeah. Um, but but some of the other ones that um, you know, in Oregon, for instance, there um, you know is one of the top, which you really wouldn't. I wouldn't. Is that think right? Yeah, one the of the case. top problem states. Problem states, really? right, right? Right. That you really wouldn't expect. But and what would be some of the states, if you remember? I know part of that was tied into your piece last week. But what would be some of the states that uh, that don't have as many problems that are more protected? Do you remember? Well, I mean, th those are and those are the complaints now. Right. Which, okay. Which is, sure. You know, there's the complaints and then there's the protection. Right. So, um, California has one of the most uh, strict data notification laws in the country. Good. They were the, really the first state, and that's another issue with um, with larger businesses because if right. you do business in California in any way, oh, even yeah. if you have a website and count that that shows up and people consumers in California mm -hmm. are using that website. Then you know you will be subject to those laws. So right. uh, because they're so large, sure. they've really uh, they've really dictated a lot of the standards on mm -hmm. on that. And they're they are one of the more restrictive uh, states. That's in great. That so they've been a so good leader. A lot of folks have taken cues from them. You know, last week as you were preparing, you I know you were one of the panelists last Thursday at the luncheon, and then on Friday you were uh, presenting a PowerPoint presentation. There was your presentation more. Towards South Carolinians, or was it on a global scale with all the global attendees at the conference? Well, I tried to focus on you know starting with global and then right. down to the United States, and then and then highlighting uh, South Carolina right. and what's going on here, um, so folks here have an understanding of that this threat is is not just one that's happening in California and New York and some right. of the larger uh, metropolitan areas, but is really one that affects day to day you know citizens here and. Here in Myrtle Beach, in fact. So I they remember were, last last year. Sorry to cut you off. Last year, you highlighted the wife of a prominent state senator here, Ray Cleary's wife, Lisa, who had gone through a terrible ordeal. Just uh, and and I think you highlighted even then being blocked out when she'd call in to try to say, you know, my thing's been breached, and they wouldn't even allow her to uh, to access anything or to try to right. correct it. Yeah, I no, guess it can that be happens. a very very difficult problem. And the problem is because businesses are so. Uh, concerned with uh, being perceived as having violated some of these laws, and they don't really understand their rights and obligations under these laws. So, a lot of times, when a consumer comes and says, "Hey, wait a minute, I've been the subject of some fraud," right. uh, it's very difficult. Like with Miss 
theory uh, to, right. um, to to fix it, to fix the problem. Yeah. So, it, it's, as I said, it's an evolving situation, and every day, you know, with uh, new technologies coming out, uh, they're helping the problem. But then there are people out there who devote their lives to hacking into systems right. and creating more sure. problems. So, every time they sort of put a patch there, there's somebody trying to work Amazing. around that patch. So. Amazing. Lastly, Kelly, what's been the best part for you being there at Womble Carlisle, Sandridge and Rice uh, just for two years now? What do you see the future holds? Well, Womble Carlisle is just a very exciting place to be. It's a very entrepreneurial firm. I mean, it's a large firm, 500 lawyers, but at the same time, they allow each lawyer to really be an entrepreneur, which is, which is really what attracted me to begin with. So, right. Great firm and uh, really tremendous people at the end of the day. So that's what, that's what drew me there and that's what kept me there. Absolutely, and hopefully for many years to come. Sorry Absolutely. we've run out of time. Time is flying. Congratulations on the successful conference last week. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Cully Carson, an attorney with Womble Carlisle, Sandridge and Rice, coming up next. Isn't it great to know that lawyers are consumers, too? While they're counseling us on things to do with our own business and our own personal lives, that they still have to be concerned about skimmers. You heard Cully talking about it. Being careful. Just watch your surroundings, whether online, in person, in a store. Just be careful. Of course, it was thrilling hearing him talk about the entrepreneurial side of Womble, Carlisle, Sandridge, and Rice. But wasn't it even more exciting to hear him talk about what it's all about, coming home after a hard day's work, looking at his beautiful bride, thinking about their love and the love of their two boys. Seeing that excitement in his eyes really is what it's all about. Kelly Carson making a difference every day. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Kelly. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely.